Okay, good morning. This project today is I am making pouches, shooter pouches with the shooter alias name embroidered on the front. The pouch is lined with waterproof canvas. The back has a strap to go over your belt. It can go over your belt or it's got a hook that can attach to a belt loop or a pant loop. It's fringed on three sides with leather fringe. So I'm going to show you how I do the embroidery. First, I have to cut out all the pieces. These are all the pieces. The lining is cut out, the backs are cut out, and the front is what's going to get embroidered. And this is how I have to do the embroidery part. I have to take my hoop, I have to hoop the interfacing, the stabilizer, I have to hoop it. Because you can't, you can't hoop vinyl, or I have not had success hooping vinyl because it gets crimped and that crease and crimp doesn't come out. The next thing I do is take a quarter inch, or this may be an eighth inch, of double stick tape. And I put it down each side of my stabilizer. Each side of my stabilizer. Okay. Then I'm going to pull up, pull the backing off the tape on both sides. Sometimes it's easy. Now I'm going to take the front part of the bag. This is vinyl. It's full leather if you want to get fancy. Put the front part of the bag, center it, and stick it down. Stick it down to the tape that you double-sided tape. Okay? It'll look like that. So next we're going to take it over to the embroidery machine. And I'm going to take you with me. So hang on, you're going to go for a wild ride. We're going over to the embroidery machine. And we're going to put this in the embroidery machine to get embroidered with the lucky person's name, with the cowboy alias. Okay. I don't know. Let me turn my machine a little bit so you can see. This machine is not the lightest thing in the world. Turn my machine around so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, this embroidery machine is digital. So what I have to do is go up to my... Uh, Cancel out the old one. Now I'm going to pick the embroidery. And this is going to be for twig. So we need a T. Large T, small W. I, G. Now we got twig up there. So we're going to set the embroidery. And twig is already centered in I don't know if you can see that okay so now I'm going to pull the thread set my presser foot down I'm going to end the edit this is my edit so I'm going to end the edit and hit embroidery now my button turns green 
so and it's already in the center so I'm going to push the button and it will embroider Finished embroidering, so we can go all the way back. Take this out, and there's twig. Okay, let's take this back over to the table. Try not to get dizzy. Okay, so now we can take this one out of the hoop. We're done with the embroidering machine, so I can turn it off, put the hoop away. Now I need my snips, because now we need to snip off these strings that's in between each letter. Snip off the strings. Okay, snip the strings off. And then we're going to tear off this stabilizer because we don't need it anymore. And that's what the back looks like. But that's not going to show because there's going to be a lining inside it. So let's put that aside. And again, we're going to trim off. Trim off the strings, or the threads that's in between each letter, because that makes it look ugly. Get them off of each letter. Okay, now we don't have to trim the threads on the back because we're going to have a lining to go in there and it's not going to show. Okay, and there's what the back of that one looks like. But remember, we got a lining, so it's not going to show. So, now that we got these done, we got to work on the straps in the back. We gotta work on this strap that's in the back. So this strap starts out like this. I've already marked the center and I put two pieces of quarter inch double-sided tape on each side of the center. We're gonna take that off. Now what the tape does is hold this down while I sew it. Fold it to the center. 
fold it to the center. This is about this is about a three and a quarter inch wide strip. And you fold them to the center, but you leave a little gap in the center. And what that is for is because you're going to fold it again lengthwise. And then that's what we're going to sew. And when you fold it again, you leave that gap in the center so it folds easily and you don't have bulk. So then you get your... I'm going to clip it. And take it to the machine. I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to sew down each outside. So I've got two more to do. Let's just do these really quick. Double-sided tape, take the backing off, fold it over, and I got this double-sided tape from Waywack. It's a sewing, sewing supply. Sometimes if your tape is old and it don't stick, you may have to get something, get a roller, I don't have my roller, and iron it over. But that's why I use the clips. The clips will hold it down. And one more. And then we'll go to the sewing machine. Hopefully I got brown thread on there. I may have to re-thread it. Now I'm using my walking foot sewing machine. Oh, come on. How come you're not? Come up, 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 up. Okay. Normally it's easy. Sometimes it's not. There we go. There's one. Okay, try this in. There's two. Now, let's fold this over. And fold it over again. And clip it. Okay, now let's go over to the sewing machine and sew it. And I'll take you with me, I reckon. I'll take you with me. Here we go. Okay, this is a sail wrap machine with a walking foot. I don't know which is the better angle. So you can see what I'm doing. Done. Now I'm going to sew across the one end. I'm not gonna back stitch. I'm gonna pull the thread up. Swivel. Can you 
see how the foot walks along? Today it's kind of running. Okay, now I want to pull these threads to the back. So we're going to pull these to the back and tie them off. There we go. We're going to tie these off when we get there. Now we're going to sew down the other side. This is about an eighth of an inch. And swivel. And sew this to the other side. We're going to pull that one to the back. And we're going to tie them off. Well, that one ain't going to get pulled. That one won't go to the back. So we're going to tie these off. One. Two. Okay. And tie. One more for good measure. Okay. So there's there's one there's one belt tab ready to go. So let's do the other two. We're gonna sew across. Hold your threads. Sew down the side. Pivot. Sew down the other end. get the other one. Here's the other one. We're going to sew across the edge. Pivot. What, uh, what I'm going to do now is put the straps on the back, sew a square in the same holes, and then I'm going to put a rivet in it to hold it. So on the top end, we're going to fold it down to here. And we're 
we're going to put our hardware on. Just going to put our little spring clip on. And we're going to fold it down. Clip it. And we're going to sew that onto the back. And we're going to fold this down. And we're going to mark where it's going to go on the back. So on the back. We're going to go we're going to go almost an inch down from the top so the top's going to have three a uh, half inch turn down and then an inch so this needs to start right there so i got to get my marking pen This is my chalk pen. So we are going to mark it. To be, to start right there. So we're going to put this on here. And it's going to go down to here. Now I eyeball that. Does that look does that look like it's in the center? Oh my chalk's falling out all over the place. Okay, let's just double check and make sure that's gonna be in the center. Okay, let's see. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wide. So the center would be one, two, three and a half. Uh, by George, that's the center. This could be moved over here a little bit. That's the center. So there's one. We'll take it over to the sewing machine. Now we got to get the spring clip, which is the front of that. Yeah, that's going to be the front. Turn it down about an inch, clip it, turn the bottom up, clip it, so I'm going to go to here, and mark it. Look straight. That ain't straight. If I put that on there and it ain't straight, it ain't gonna look right. Okay. So there's another one ready to go. Put our spring clip on, fold it down. Make sure you have enough room to sew that little square. So we're going to clip it, turn this one up, clip it, put it on here. Measure There we go. Okay. 
got three ready to get sewed onto the pouch. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna sew these onto the pouch. I'll bring you back and then we'll I'll show you how I'm gonna do the flaps. Stay tuned, part two coming. Okay, I'm back. This is part two. Now, off camera, I sewed these on to the back side of the bag. I just made, I sewed a square. I just made a square. Now, what I'm gonna do for added support, because this is gonna be a stress area if you put it on your belt buckle or on somewhere going to be a stress area so for added support I'm going to put a rivet these are double capped rivets so you need a rivet and a cap these are the rivets and the caps so we're going to put two of these on each on each one but first I got to use my handy dandy pliers these looks wicked and I got to punch a hole so what I do is I roll this up so my pliers can get in there to it and I'm gonna get right in as close to the center of that square I sewed as I can and punch hopefully I get it all the way through Oh, I see some more strings. Where's my lighter? Always burn your strings. Okay, so now we're gonna take this part of the rivet and push it through. Now rivets come in different sizes. I use this size rivet because the shank will go all the way through. And then we put the little cap on. Put the little cap on like that. Then we go over here to the rivet setter. And I put the bottom of the cap in the rivet setter and push it down with all my might. And it sets the rivet. Sets the rivet so it's flush. So that back, that back is ready. So let's do these other two. We gotta roll it up. Roll it up so I can get to it with my hole puncher. Punch the hole in the center of the square. Hopefully, then take my rivet and the cap. There's the rivet and the cap. Push it through the hole. Put the cap on. Set the cap in the press. Make sure you get it on the press. set it okay roll it up punch the hole in the center get the rivet and the cap I got magnetic snaps in here too my rivets are sticking. Okay, so we we'll put that through. Put the cap on. Set it into the press. And set it straight. And press it down. And that one is set. That one is ready to go. 
Got one more. So let's roll it up. I think I'm going to go ahead and do both the holes this time. For one hole. If you hear that dog barking outside, that's my dog, Smokey. He barks like that when my husband is operating machinery. My husband's trying to get rid of some weeds. Smokey don't like machinery, like vacuum cleaners, weed whackers. Okay, there's my rivets for this one. Let's put this rivet in. Do this one again. Put that one in. Take it over to the center. Make sure it's in the center. If it's not, it's gonna crooked it, make it crooked. Make sure your fingers are out of the way. Okay. Okay, now, and the chalk just rubs off, so we got the back ready to go. So I'm going to put my press away. Now also off camera, I sewed the flaps with, onto the lining, so now... We got to turn them, put the magnetic slap in, but before I turn it, I want to trim the seams down with my pinking shears. It'll help it turn better because we got to go back to the machine and top stitch it. But I want to get my magnetic snap in there. Okay. There's one. There's two. There's three. Okay, now we gotta turn it. And we need to top stitch it. But we gotta get it turned really good. I gotta get my this is this is a letter opener, but I use it as a turning stick to get the edges turned. Sometimes you have to poke out the corners. These are rounded corners. There we go. You want to be careful poking because sometimes you poke all the way through. Okay. Now, we're going to clip it down. 
just on the edge because this is vinyl and waterproof canvas and you can't arm that. If this was fabric, I would iron it, press it with the iron, and then go sew it. But this is not fabric. So, when you see handmade items, and you question, why is it so expensive? People, this is why. Okay, now I'm going to go over and I'm going to top stitch all the way around this. And then after I top stitch it, I'm going to put the stabilizer. This is a stabilizer that's going to fit inside here. That makes, I may have to cut that down. That looks like it's too wide. Yeah, I may have to cut that stabilizer down. It's too wide. But the stabilizer goes in there. So your magnetic snap, I have something to grab onto, but also it makes your flap less flappy. Otherwise, it's just going to be like this. With the stabilizer, it'll be more sturdy. So I'm going to go over to the machine. I'm going to turn these, top stitch these, and then I'll come back and we'll go to part three. Part three, we'll be putting in the snaps. See you later. Alrighty now. Off camera, I went ahead and put the magnetic, the male part of the magnetic uh, snap on the flap and got it ready. So I saved this one to do so I can show you how I do it. First, we have to put the stabilizer inside the flap, and you have to wiggle it and shove it in there. As you can see, the stabilizer is inside the flap. Now, I'm going to eyeball where to put the magnetic snap and I've been putting them as much in the center as I can get it so that's the center so I take my pencil and I mark it and then I need to punch a hole where I marked it but I don't want to punch the hole all the way through the back so I'm going to protect the back with this extra piece extra piece of stabilizer then I'm going to take my handy dandy knife isn't that a dangerous looking thing it is if you cut yourself then I'm going to go in and I'm going to poke hole for my snap leg. But I got to poke it through the stabilizer too. So there's one. There's two. Now it didn't go all the way through the stabilizer. So I'm going to give it a little help because I don't want it to cut a big old hole that might rip out. So now here's my male portion of the un of the little sn magnetic snap. Sometimes you have to push the legs together to get them in there. And I can tell I didn't make the holes big enough. So we got to go back in. There we go. Take our knife and not cut our fingers. And 
push the snap in. Have to take some finessing because you're going through that stiff stabilizer. Okay, I got one leg through and the other leg through. Okay, so I can take that out. And I don't know if you can see, but down there, probably can't see, but take my word for it, it's in there. So now we got to put the washer, what it is my, there it is. This is a washer that goes over the legs. Now I'm doing this by feel because I can't see. But I'm finding Got it. Didn't, don't I? Yeah, I got it. Now I gotta take my screwdriver and bend the legs over. See if I can do it with my fingers. Oh, nope. Dang. That is a stout little some strong legs. Okay, I got one bent. Oh, okay, now I'm going to take the stabilizer and put it back in on top of the legs because I got to hammer them down because I don't have the strength to bend them down so I got to hammer them down but I put the stabilizer in there to protect the front. Here's my hammer. Just give it a little tap tap tap. And I don't know if you can see in there, but the legs are down and they're not protruding. Now, one more thing I gotta do before I can close up the flap, and that is to get a square of duct tape. I duct tape over everything to keep it from messing up the outside. So we're gonna duct tape over those legs. There we go. There. Now, I duct taped over those legs. So now, we got to turn down. I think I need to cut some of this off. Cutting off some of the lining because it looks a little thick. So here we go. We're going to turn it down and take our clip and clip it all the way across about a little over a quarter inch. Little over a quarter inch. And I always put it down on my grid and measure it to make sure that it's straight. Now, 
we're going to sew two lines across here. Go up a stitch and then back over. Then, and that's going to be butted up against it's going to be sewed on the back but it's going to be butted up against the strap that we put on earlier so we're going to eyeball it for center Gonna check. That looks like an inch and a half. Oh, that's needs to move up a little. Two and two. So then we're gonna take. Crooked, don't it? Sometimes I like to eyeball it. So that's going to get sewed on to the back with two rows of stitches, and then the back will be totally done. And then we will finish the front. So I'm going to take this over to the machine and get these sewed on. And then I'll bring you back. 